And we've got Miles Udlin with us here at the desk. Markets editor, Miles Udlin, I should say. And, and Miles, you know, you wrote yeah. that you wrote about this in the morning brief today. Specifically, we heard from uh, Jay Powell yesterday saying we're not trying to cause a recession. Mm -hmm. But your case being here that the data, the projections point to the fact that that's where we're headed. Yeah, I mean, you know, Brian and I were chatting about this uh, as soon as he got out of, of the lockup and we were able to communicate again. <laughs> I never have a break. <laughs> it's like uh, you, you look at those projections and you see unemployment going up and growth going down. And I, I am loath to use the word stagflation ever because it has just this, like, it, it's a political, you know, framework, right, for how to talk about the economy. But ultimately, when you have rising prices and slowing growth, that is the scenario the Fed is forecasting that we are going to move into. So sure, Powell yesterday, Brian, talking about, oh, 4.1% would be a historically low level on the unemployment rate, but he's still saying we're good with the half percent rise in unemployment. And you know, the argument I was trying to put forward in the morning brief today is, okay, well, it starts with a half percent, but maybe you live with a full percent, two, three percent, because they are so committed to bringing down inflation. Yeah, and, and kind of as a reminder here, you know, the Fed's got that dual mandate, right? Stable prices, and also uh, maximum employment. And we know that the inflation side is where the trouble is. I mean, we're at, what, 3.6% unemployment right now? So I guess the question, though, is what is the measure of what would be a hard landing here? Because, you know, people might see two back-to-back -back quarters of negative GDP. That could certainly be the case once we get that read on, on Q2 GDP. So what would it be? Would it be 4%, 4.5%, 5% unemployment? Uh, I think, I mean, look, we're going to get two negative quarters of GDP, like now. So we're going to be in recession, right, by the third quarter of this year, I think. I mean, Atlanta Fed GDP is down it's to a, zero. Yeah, nope. so, we're, so we're pretty much, and I think uh, Steve Matthews at Bloomberg used this phrase a couple weeks ago. He said, there's a recession everywhere but in the data. So um, you talk about what's a hard landing. I mean, at this point, I don't know why we are sitting here ruling out things like 7% unemployment. Just, you know, just a hard landing. Like, it, all of a sudden, you see hundreds. But I'm, uh, what I'm saying is, like, why would we sit here and be like, Oh, we won't see months where hundreds of thousands of people lose their jobs. I mean, like when you go into a recession, you don't know what is going to happen. We can say we think, oh, it could be this kind of a downturn, but there are negative externalities once you enter a downturn. Well, and I, I guess the question here is, is that what it's going to take to rein in inflation, given the levels that we're at right now? I mean, if we bring the Fed funds rate to 4%, I mean, we're talking about 3.4% at the end of this year, again, pretty much doubling where the Fed was in March. I think... What to me was jarring about the SCP and jarring about the fact they even went 75 is I don't know why one ought to be confident in thinking, okay, but it will stop here. And I mean, I know it's kind of, kind of making a slippery slope argument, but it's like the Fed has opened the door to lots of possibilities, both in their own policy path and in what may happen as a result of their policy. Do you path. think that because they broke off from that half a percentage point, you know, commitment that they actually give themselves a lot more room going forward. Do you think it was a mistake that they ended up last minute pivoting? I think it, I think it gives them less room because the, what they're mm. saying, uh, this is the thing, they reacted to a rise in gas prices that we knew that we could see by looking at the price of oil, right? That is what pushed headline inflation higher. They reacted to headline inflation. So now what? The war in Ukraine is what's the, the marginal bid on the Fed's own policy. So sure, why, why wouldn't 100 basis points be off the table in the future. All right. Chief Markets Editor, Just Miles Udlin, with the spoiler there. Thanks so much. Appreciate